which was 127 Smite auditions, I landed my first Smite skin. Oh, so just don't oh, give up. There's a story too. 127 like you... Smite auditions after the Okatron workshop. <laughs> yeah. I love that you tracked them. <laughs> Elise Bowman here with Anime Adventures, and I am with Erica Muse. Erica, your cosplay is fantastic today. I love it so much. Tell us about this cosplay, although I'm not going to hold this throughout the show, so I'm going to set that down. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it's a fan art from Little Paper Forest of a uh, goddess Flareon. Um, so it was inspired by the Little Paper Forest art, and basically some friends of mine had asked to cosplay together for Fan Expo as the goddesses, and I hadn't worn it since, so I decided to wear it today. I love it, yes, and we're here at Anime Dallas. It is fantastic, the energy is electric, and Erica, I should say, does it all. <laughs> to keep with the Pokemon theme. Um, she is a voice actress, so we're going to talk about some of her fun characters. She is a cosplayer, and I just love Erica so much. And here's what I, before we talk about your characters, like from One Piece and from all of these great shows, um, I would love to hear your story about how you got into voice acting because you have such an inspirational story. Oh gosh, okay. Um, I will attempt to keep it less long-winded. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but it's definitely, it's a soapbox of mine per se, I guess, I don't have a lot of those. But um, so voice acting for me, I hadn't uh, considered it as an option because I grew up loving anime to the point that I thought that it was celebrities. And most cartoons you'll notice are famous actors, like mm. being the characters. So I didn't think it was an option unless I got into live acting. So I pursued that for several years uh, and it just didn't work out. And in college, I worked on music videos with Josh Martin. And oh, as you guys know, us, voice of Boo. Voice of Majin Boo. And so I was guesting as a cosplayer because I started going to anime conventions in 2005. I loved making costumes and wearing them more than just Halloween. And I started getting asked to guest and we had a table across from each other at my, like, my third con that I guessed at. And I said, Josh, and he said, Erica. And I uh, realized, because he was under a Majin Buu sign, that he really was Buu. And we were oh. always giving each other a hard time. And uh -huh. I said, Josh, you're the voice of Majin Buu. He goes, I've told you several <laughs> times. And I said, I, I thought you were kidding. <laughs> and, uh, you did. and I looked in the eye and I said, well, if you can do that, I can do that. And I was mostly kidding. And he was like, OK, you know, I'll I'll cover you to go take a class, you know, and he's giving me a hard time. And uh -huh. I'm like, okay. And he recommended Chris Rager's class. So I took uh, Chris Rager's voice acting class. I really wanted to pursue it. And he said, because of my time away from acting, I should go and uh, take some improv classes. And I ended up graduating from John Casablanca's, getting an agent and uh, following that path. And it actually didn't take off until I went to a panel at IkiCon. Uh, a couple years into my journey and Greg Ayers told the story about how when he was ready to pursue voice acting he just told his job he quit and it all worked out and I said I'm gonna try it and crazy really? enough uh-huh it worked out so I told my job I quit and I was the top of sales and had no idea and they said no oh. you don't you're the top of sales come in whenever you can work and they gave me a full flex schedule Really? Oh, gosh. And it all worked That's... out for me. So I can't promise that that would work for you, but I owe so much of my career to Josh Martin and uh, oh. to, to Greg Ayers, and I love them to death. And Jim Ferranda inspired me so much along the way. Like, So so th those three really are my heroes. Yes. Um, and and I, I mean, I have Jim Ferranda's mic. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> Yeah. Does he, he know like, this? Yeah, he, did you? <laughs> he brought it to me. Oh, he, he did? He posted on Twitter that he was selling his, his previous mic for, for half off, and I needed a mic oh, for okay. my home studio. And so I reached out to him, and he was like, you live so close, I'll drive it over there. And oh, my like, goodness. What? What's better than that? Delivery from Jim. <laughs> yeah, and he signed my claptrap and everything. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, what a great story, because I coach voice actors, too, and I end up coaching a lot of people who are just getting started and don't know where to get started. And it seems so far away, I think, for people to attend conventions as an actor. And so so you and I, like, we attended Bonsai Con together, and that was her first convention to attend as a voice actor and it was so exciting yeah. to see her because we met at <laughs> KameaCon when she was cosplaying so I was so excited that you were there as a voice actor and so I just think it's inspirational because you just have to go for it and what and it may not be quitting your job 
Like, not everybody. <laughs> and I your can't promise that it would work out that way. <laughs> I also was fully prepared for it to not go that way, but yeah. I was like, I'm trying it. <laughs> hey, I'm Edgar Avalis. Are you interested in voice acting or trying to up your level? Elise teaches group and private sessions. Stuff that I learned with her has been the business of voice acting, as well as trying to convey emotions with voice acting. You can find out more at elisecoaches.com. You have to take bold moves, whatever those bold moves are, yeah. to make things happen. Because that, what I'm also hearing in your story is you did the work. Like you reached out to people, you were pursuing things, you were doing music videos, you were asking Josh what to do, you were taking classes, you were asking people's opinions. Oh yeah, this which was I always years. recommend. So that wasn't all. I tried to condense the story, but I uh, so I started taking the classes beginning of 2018. And I didn't uh, do the quit my job and walk away until after IkiCon 2019, I believe. Yeah. Um, but it was rough because I had that flex schedule and it worked great. And then I started, uh, I got a bigger agent and I started doing after uh, Smite, which was 127 Smite auditions. I landed my first Smite skin. Oh, so just don't oh, give up. There's a story too. 127 like Smite auditions after the Okatron workshop. <laughs> yeah. I love that you tracked them. <laughs> There's and if you hear the first thing. one, you know why I didn't get cast. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> now, now I want to find terrible. the first one. <laughs> it sounded like somebody on a phone in a car down a cave. It was, you know. But you know, you got to do that first one. Just get out there. Okay, so let's talk about some of the characters that you have now done uh, after 120 auditions for one 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 video game. Okay, well we'll start here because you brought it okay. up. Okay. Yes. Um so I did Snow Kitten Best Dead and Smite. Uh-huh. And Sentai Filmworks brought me in for After the Rain. It was my first anime. I was super excited. Uh, -huh. uh and I had done a few commercials. So then I actually quit quit my flex job. Okay. And uh COVID hit 5 days later. Oh, and, and you're I like did nothing for a year and a half. Oh no. I mean, I auditioned, I did some indie projects that were already ongoing, uh -huh. uh, and then I got like another part-time job, uh, and I started actually doing management for conventions, like behind the scenes as they were trying to come back. So a okay. lot of my in-between gigs were still in the con scene. I was just like reaching for part-time jobs that were still in the realm of what I wanted to do. Okay. So I tried to stay in my lane. Oh, so that's good. Yeah, so you were around it. And yeah. You were, okay, and let's talk about... Half mouth? Yes. Okay, I gotta hear the voice, and you know what I'm gonna do, don't you? If you watch the show at all, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy her voice. <laughs> Let's hear it. Well, tell so, us about your character, because what does she do? I love what she does. So I like to tell people she brings everyone together, but it's because they annoy each other and the friends start to fall apart, mm -hmm. and then I show up and they have to unite against a common enemy because I get into the server and I blow everything up. She plays everything up. Okay, let's hear her and let's see. I'm gonna try to do your voice. Ew, Michi, that's not how you do that. If it didn't explode, you didn't do it right. Oh, that's not how you do that. If it didn't explode, you didn't do it right. <laughs> She's very sassy. A lot of my original characters were like Valley Girls and Mean Girls. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a stereotype. You're getting into character. <laughs> and then I, I finally Let's did see. a wholesome slice of life girl, but oh. she's not in a family friendly show. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's... Let's talk about One Piece. Um, so One Piece, uh, Cinnamon mm -hmm. Charlotte, she mm -hmm. doesn't have as many lines, but she's more well known because she's one of Big Mom's daughters. Yeah. But she actually likes to just threaten people with like staring them down with weapons, but not actually doing anything. Oh, okay. That... So, but she does have some lines and stuff, uh, but she's she's just, she's more serious. She's definitely evil. She's part of a triplet with a smoothie and citron. Uh, and if you've seen the show, my favorite thing to s tell people is, sorry, I didn't pull the trigger. Sorry, I didn't pull the trigger. <laughs> Um, and then this is Big Mom Minister 4. Uh -huh. uh, she first appears when Big Mom really wants a croak and bush and she starts eating her, like the town and then her own children even. And so I'm like, we have to stop her before she can eat the capital. Um, because that's not ideal. Yeah, it's really not. No. <laughs> I but yeah, Big Mom's I... a wacky character. Oh my gosh. If she gets fun. angry for food, she eats everything in sight, including the people. Okay, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is Radical Mary. So she's a very above and beyond magical girl because she's actually in a cartoon within the show. So if you've seen Lucifer and Biscuit Hammer, there's a cartoon that the kids in the show watch every morning. And actually later in the show, they end up cosplaying them. Uh, so I am I play uh, on the other side of Emmy Lowe, who is Magical Marie. And we are constantly attacking each other and we're just yelling uh, attacks at each other, which it's funny because I have a staff here, 
But when the camera switches angles, I start asking people for pliers because the actresses in the cartoon actually get mad at each other. <laughs> so I'm just screaming pliers and she's screaming hammer and that's our ongoing bit in the show. Oh, how fun. <laughs> So many fun characters, and I love this because this is kind of a mix of your voice acting roles and your cosplay, and I'm kind yeah. of running backwards. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I'm planning a new one, but yeah, this is, at the time, this was everybody I was allowed to announce. <laughs> oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. So Snow Kit and Besta, and then this was After the Rain, uh, and then this is Takami from the Island of Giant Insects, so that's fun, and then Life Lessons of uh, Yurimichi Onisan, so I will highly recommend Life Lessons with Yurimichi Onisan. Okay. The little kids in the shows give the teachers a hard time. They are teachers who pursued acting and didn't work out and they became gymnasts in this child children's show. And they talk about it realistically and the kids ask the darndest questions. Yes. Um, so so at, so at one point in the show, they are talking about a person being servile and I'm a little girl, so I don't understand what that means. So I ask the mascots what they're talking about behind the stage. And they're like, we're not going to tell her what that means. And I go, do you think a 31 year old would know? And they're like, uh, yeah, sure. Like they didn't understand the question. And so of course I run and I ask Yuramichi Onisan in the middle of this children's show, what serval means. <laughs> and he goes on this rant and it's hilarious. <laughs> Well, let's switch <laughs> gears. Uh, these are so fun. Let's switch gears to your cosplay because you have so many. Oh, let's start with the picture of the cosplay costume you're actually in that oh, I can't okay. reach. <laughs> you're good. So, yes. Um, so, Goddess Flareon. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it was inspired by uh, Little Paper Forest. If you've seen any of her artwork on like Instagram and Facebook, and um, she also does cons and stuff. Um, so, she takes and she layers paper to make her art and it's just beautiful. And she did uh, goddess versions of all of the evolutions. And my friends wanted to do that together. So we made the cosplays of her art. That. I love, wow, I love that. Okay, one more. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with Val Hallen. Okay. Because he's super fun. And a lot of you may recognize this, but not be able to place it. Uh, if you grew up watching Dexter's Lab, then you remember Justice Friends, the cartoon within the show, which funny enough, I later ended up in a cartoon within a show. <laughs> yes. But I love being Val Hallen because he just makes all these jokes about like, you know, rock and roll and like his mighty steed, which is actually a little goat. <laughs> and he doesn't have eyes because his hair stays there. Yes. And he's just a rock and roller that's just, he's a lot of fun. Oh, fun. So, yeah, just as friends. You have, I, I love it. You have so many fun things going on. And what I love about Erica, since the day that we met, like she's just this bundle of energy. We may have even met at a different convention, Akon, I think. Um, but she's just so energetic and so friendly. And what you see is what you get. And so every time I see her, I have so much fun. So I appreciate you doing the interview. This thank has you been for great. Me. Absolutely. And thank you for being here. We appreciate you, and we will see you later. Bye.